Alrighty, last section in the chapter. And in this section, what we're working on is applying to applying Newton's law to more than one object at a time, Newton's second law to be exact. And so this is a situation where we have a couple of objects tied together by a rope or a string or a cord, and then we're pulling the front one and then the second, first and second one are both getting pulled along at the same time. Now, the key to remember here is that um, each object has to be looked at individually because each object by itself is going to obey Newton's second law. So again, this is really um, a, a matter of, of algebra, a matter of manipulating things until we solve for the um, variable that we need to solve for. So let's look at um, example 6.6. .6. I am gonna work it mathematically just slightly differently than he does. Um, if you recall from algebra two, if you have two equations and two unknowns, there's about three different ways that you can um, solve those equations. You can do it by a substitution. You can do it by adding the equations together. Um, and so there's, it, there's multiple ways to solve that. And so the way I solve it is gonna be just slightly different than what he does. Whatever way is the easiest for you to work the algebra is fine because you should end up with the same answer. Okay, so. Um, in example 6.6, .6, we've got two toy cars um, tied together with a piece of string and a child is pulling them and we know the force with which he is pulling them. And the question says, what acceleration do the cars experience and what will be the tension in the string? And he says we get to ignore friction in this problem. So um, I have two cars. So I have... Um, this one is going to be, since the child was over here in the picture, this will be my front car and this is gonna be my back car. Now, what you have to keep in mind again is all of the forces acting on the problem. So because it's sitting on the floor, there's going to be a normal force. Um, I should have done that this way, normal force. And there's going to be the weight of the car. And this particular car was 3.5, kilograms okay the only other thing acting on this car is the string which is going this way so we're going to have the tension in the string going like that now on this car again we're going to have the weight of the car acting down and the normal force acting up and this was the 4.5 kilogram car um, we know that the child is pulling on the front car with a force of, uh, where was it? 3.2 Newtons. And the string is going to be pulling backwards on this one, okay? So again, I have a, it, it may look super complicated, but the fact is, um, because I get to ignore friction, that actually makes this problem a lot easier. Now, he does give you some problems where you're going to have to include friction, and so I'll mention that point here in a second. Um, but because I, I don't have to worry about friction, the normal force and the weight really don't enter into a problem where I don't need to worry about friction. They balance each other out, um, but it doesn't really have anything to do with the tension in the rope. So here, um, the, we know that the car is experiencing an acceleration because there's a force being acted on it this way. And, and so we know that that tension in the rope on this back car is going to be equal to the mass times the acceleration. And the mass of this car is 3.5 kilograms. Okay, so here, uh, one equation, two unknowns, so I can't go any further than this one right now. Okay, now over here, again, the car's not moving in a vertical direction, so the, the normal force and the weight are gonna cancel one another out, but I know that the car is being pulled this direction, so what that tells me is that, again, the sum of the forces has to equal, to the, has to equal the mass times the acceleration. Well, if I define to the right as being positive, which is really what I did over here, I said, okay, T is gonna be positive, so if this direction is positive, I'm gonna have 3.2 Newtons. I'm gonna subtract off the tension because it's acting towards the left, and that's gonna be equal 
to the mass times the acceleration. Okay, so 3.2 newtons minus T equals 4.5 kilograms, because that's the mass of this box, times the acceleration. And again, I've got um, an equation with two unknowns, but it's the same unknowns that I have over here. So um, one way that you can think about this is I can say 3.2 newtons minus 4.5 kilograms times A equals T. Okay, so what I did is I solved both equations for T, and what I can do is I can say, well, if this is equal to T and this is equal to T, then I can just set these two pieces equal to each other. So I could have 3.5 kilograms times A equals 3.2 newtons minus 4.5 kilograms times A, okay? So now I have one equation, and the only unknown I have is A. It's on both sides of the equation, but I can, I can combine those together and solve for that. Um, if I move this to this side of the equation, that's going to give me 8.0 kilograms times A equals 3.2 newtons. Um, you know that a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, so if I divide both sides by kilogram, that leaves me with meters per second squared. So when I solve for that, A is going to be 0 0.40 meters per second squared. So that is the acceleration that both of the cars are moving in. And then it also wanted to know um, what the tension would be in the string. Well, you could use either this equation or this equation to solve for that. It wouldn't make any difference. So if I take 0.4 meters per second squared, multiply it by 3.5 kilograms, the tension in the string is going to be equal to 1.4 newtons. And again, it shouldn't make any difference which equation you use. This is the easier one, so that's the one I would pick. Okay, so I mentioned what would I do if I had to worry about friction? Okay, well, if I had to worry about friction in this problem, which way is friction acting? Well, friction is always acting opposed to the motion, right? Okay, so friction would act like this, and friction would act like that here. So if I, was, if I had to worry about that, then this side is going to become T minus F equals MA, and here I would have 3.2 newtons minus T minus F, equals ma. Now at that point you have to be careful because your f is um, mu times the normal force. Well here I didn't I only knew the mass and I didn't know the normal force so you'd have to go ahead and calculate the weight because the weight and the normal force are going to be equivalent to each other. Okay so if you end up having a problem and I know that you do um, some of the, most of the problems that the author gives you don't require friction, but one of them will. So when you get to the problem where you have to take friction into account, this is how you're going to do it. Just keep in mind, you've got this, this diagram up here. Friction acts opposite of the tension. Therefore, you've got to subtract it off. And that's the same thing that's going to be true here. Tension and friction are going to act in the same way, same direction on the front car. So you're going to subtract both of those from this one over here, and then that, that will be how you're gonna think about that type of problem. Frictional force is calculated just like normal, coefficient of friction times the normal force, so you have to, you're gonna have another step because you're gonna have to calculate that piece in there as well, okay? Again, if you get stuck, uh, if you need help, make sure that you ask me and I'll help you figure it out.